everyone welcome back to my channel Bob's Garage this is something I've been waiting to do for a long time but uh, frankly too many of the projects got in the way but um, put probably two years now start a video for my uh, Ford tractor a small compact tractor four-wheel drive a uh, Ford 1210 and a long list of work I needed to be done on it but I just haven't got around so today I'm gonna be starting to work on it um, First things first is the front axle. Um, can't see too well. I'm going to get some lighting set up in there in a bit. But uh, front axle. Uh, I'll probably take it from this angle. Front axle's got basically two pinions for the axle. And an O-ring type seal and two bushings. And it's leaking very heavily out of the front uh front seal and the front bushing so that's what today's project is going to be is going to be working on getting that sealed up so it'll hold its uh, lubricant this takes uh, the same um, same fluid as the takes the same fluid as the uh, the, the hydrostatic transmission and it comes up pretty quick so that <laughs> can't keep that doing that uh, makes a mess and, uh, you know, I've got to make sure I get enough lubrication in the gears there. So that's what we're going to be working on today. So uh, sit back, relax, and and uh, let's see how I can fumble my way through this. Thanks, everyone. Well, just bring you back a little bit at a time. But uh, axle is basically two trunnions. The back one being hollow that the drive shaft goes through. And there's two bolts on either side of the back trunnion. You can't see it from here, but there's another trunnion on the front tool bolts there and there's dowel pins that line everything up see there's a little spot right here where you can get a uh, pry bar in and you just slowly work it down so putting it back together you got to be really careful um you get everything all aligned you know even tighten up evenly so it goes all back in square when i was down here i noticed i've got this seal as well sorry for the angle got the seal here it looks like both of them are leaking. This one's worse. So I'm going to probably do that in a separate video. I think I'll just keep it with this with uh, this uh, bushings and o-rings for this video aside. So the next thing I do is I'm going to pull the cup off the front. Should, that cup should just come off and it does nice and simply and there's the o-ring and there's the bushing that couldn't be any easier I'll clean that up and I'll see about getting that new bushing in there <clears throat> okay I'll show you how far I've gotten so far a couple surprises some big ones frankly I'll take you down underneath here. I'm going to turn the light on for this. So, got the axle out. It took the, like I said, it to sort of pry everything down very gently at the same time because there's dowel pins. Pulled the front cap off. I left the wheels on so that I could slowly rock, rock the uh, axle out gently and at the same time jacking up so I can clear the top of the, uh, the housing there. Get a bit closer. The top of the housing. So, everything there went fine. Downside to that is, uh, you know, can't get the uh, axle out, slide easily. You got to do a bit more work, so I'll have to disconnect the pitman arm on the other side. I should say the, the steering link, disconnect that, and then I'll move it all the way out. The reason for that is that uh, right here, this, this is the other sleeve. Now what I'm going for, like I said, is to replace the two, the O-ring, and see there's one in the front, one in the back. The surprise I found is right here. You can see at the top, there's journal damage. So I'm going to show you the, the cup. Now where did I put that? These are the bearings that are supposed to go in. There's a black, like a Teflon coating on the inside, then bronze, then a metal backing. Now, there's bits and pieces here, but uh, I had to take a bit of cutting to get it out. Uh, so it's a little hard to see here. Let me see if I can turn this off. Oh, 
there was some wear and it went through the Teflon, that's fine. But if you can see it right around here, the bronze on the side, gone, and then it's right of metal on metal. So what that, what that did, that was the mess I got getting it out of there. There's the other half. You can't really see it as easily because the, uh, I had to use a bit of heat in grinding, but that's where the top surface of the, of the uh, bearing was sitting. And uh, it's caused, it's caused some damage to the top. So there was metal on metal transfer. So that's not good. I'm going to have to take a look and see what I can do about um, repairing that. Not to mention another added complication. That wear was fairly significant. So this new bearing has got a, a, a split race. But when I slide that on, I don't know if I get my hand in here too well. When I slide this on, tighten that down, there's still a lot of clearance. That's still rocking back and forth. So that's not good. Even though putting this bearing on is going to, uh, you know, is going to, uh, take up for some of the wear that's taken place, it's likely that that bearing surface, the front of the, of the, uh, and I don't have that at the back, that only, so I tried the same other fact and it's snug. I wouldn't say snug, but it's, you know, it's, there's no slop, but that front one, that is a problem. So next I'm going to get these tires off, disconnect the axle so, um, so I can drop the axle down a little bit, slide it sideways. I'll get that other uh, bearing up. That was a bit of a nightmare. Um, hopefully the back's a bit better, but I effectively had to uh, to cut through the bearing just so I can slide it out. Couldn't even see the the joint in the in the bearing halves. So this is how much the pressure's been on the front. But I'll get started on that, and I'll bring you back when that's done. Okay, so I got the axle out front axle out you know, pretty easy just dropped off one wheel and it came out pretty pretty quickly disconnected the the steering arm at this side um, and here's the the two bushings like I said it got the, the just set in here there's slop on both um, of the bushings this is the drive shaft this tube was packed right full of dirt and debris so this is the uh, the seal, it looks like it's just a piece of a radiator hose that's clamped between this tube, the axle goes between, and this front end connects into, got this backwards, connects into here, connects into there, there's an o-ring and a seal here, axle sl shaft slides in there, and this would be connected here, and the back end goes into the front output for the from the transmission. Like I said, it was packed right full of, of debris and dirt, blew everything out, cleaned this out, still not the greatest, but cleaned out. So now I've got to replace these um, bushings. This one's not as bad. Now, so this is the orientation it would have inside the tractor. You can see the bottom here has got a little bit of a darker coloring, but the top you can see, just one second, the top you can see is more bronzy, so it's been wearing on the top as well. But generally, way better. And uh, there is the O-ring on the other side that would sit right in this face right here, right in that groove. So we can see this is the, the new bearing, which has got... Uh, that little, like a Teflon coating, so that's going to wear away pretty quickly. So I'm going to struggle getting this out again. Um, it's not bad. When I fit this in and I fit this on the housing, there's slop in both of these. So I'm probably not gaining much by changing this out, but I've got the part now. Might as well do it. This is the um, the, the front one. Definitely needed it. Like I said, it was steel on steel. The bronze had wore right through it. The two layers of wore right through. So I'm going to work on that next. Uh, it's, uh, it, I may wind up having, unfortunately, do the exact same thing, which is to try to cut along here and on that seam 
and open it up so I can pull it out. It's just going to be a long pain in the arse. So I'm not going to you watch that, watch me struggle on that. I'm just going to work away at it. Okay, got that done. What a bear that was. So what I, this, this getting this uh, bearing out was probably more work than everything else combined so far. This than the front one. So I ran hacksaw blade down, down the um, split to widen it. I took a die grinder to uh, cut a, a relief, then hammer and chisel to knock it back so that it would squeeze together. I was extremely careful, extremely lucky. This is the area I was working in. Don't know how well you can see that. Uh, and I did really well. No marks or anything there. Much better than the front. Got a little bit too aggressive on the front. So it's all ready to go. Um, you know, I'll check some dimensions to find how tightly that's forced in. I don't really want it to be as tight. I'll, uh, I don't have a larger bore hone, uh, just the small brake hone. So I'll probably have to use emery cloth to clean that up. As far as the front goes, same thing here. Everything's good. Oh, there's a seal in there. I think I'll leave that. It's really easy to knock out. I just didn't get one and a an no ring. Same thing. I had no oil leak back here. I can just make sure that's thoroughly clean and probably pack it with grease. And then, uh, cause there really wasn't a problem of leaking out the back. They were coming at the o-ring surface right here, you know, not out anywhere else. This would probably pool up a bit of oil, um, if anything. So not too worried about that. And the next thing I got to work on, so that's pretty straightforward, but the next thing I got to work on is this. So I mentioned that before. I think I'm going to make an attempt at building up these pits with a little bit of weld. Uh, still not sure. Uh, might just try one little area, see how well it works, and very carefully shape it in the middle, finish it to get it back smooth. Get some fine paper to, once I've shaped it to uh, polish it as well. But I think it's going to be better than just leaving that because that will, it, although it's there's no burrs or anything, that's going to cause damage to that bearing again. Okay, so I'll bring you back when I've got, uh, when I'm ready or when I've done a little bit of the assembly work there. Okay, I kind of got a little further ahead without filming. Um, first of all, with the axle, I've uh, built up the divots or the um, the gouges where the there's metal transfer on the bearing surface. This isn't ideal, but you got to buy the whole housing in order to do something about that. This is not repairable, so this is a really slow process. Um, build up with a bit of weld and then very carefully um, grind down and file down and repeat. I would put uh, basically a, 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 a primer paint on top and then rub the surface over top, see where the high spots are. Check with my fingernail feeler. There's still a couple small ones here I didn't bother with, but the bigger ones I covered up. I don't think this is probably not gonna work out too well. The uh, So my fingernail is not really hanging up in anything. This, spot here is really good um there's a little bit of an edge effect there but that was the big hole right there or big gouge it feels good there's no high spots the, the point i was trying to do is just basically fill in the low spots and i think i've done that so i'm going to put another coat of primer on there and rub the bearing on top and make sure i don't see any high spots it feels smoothish <laughs> but like i said it's this is really um not a whole lot I can do about that. Okay, so I spent a little bit more time on it uh, and, and largely just very gently filled a couple more spots and just um, coating the surface and very gently uh, hand filing in a couple areas. And the weld's pretty hard, but being really careful not to take too much off. I think the guy's as good as it should be. I uh, don't know if this made it better or worse. We'll find out, but uh, 
This is smoother than it was before. The heavy pits that are in there um, had some sharp edges. I've got a couple small ones here, but the bigger ones are gone. I'm hoping that I may get some localized wear, but I won't get the gouging that was taking place. But I guess time will tell. And worse, worse I guess the, the uh, simple solution for this, though, if it is a problem, you know, dropping this and replacing just the front bushing is a whole lot easier than the rest anyways. Hopefully it doesn't come to that, so we'll see what happens. Put your comments in the, in the comment section. Thanks. Okay, so I got the bushings pressed in. Uh, a couple things. I put the uh, bushings at the at the 3 o'clock or the 9 o'clock position, just so you get solid bushing on the side. The one on the bottom of the top surface. Um, this one seemed just a little bit narrower, this bushing, so I was able to actually get the whole O-ring, the replacement O-ring, right down in. So that seems to be a lot better seal. So that one went in no problem at all. Um, now, I also took a closer look at this O-ring, and you won't be able to see this very well, but there's marks on the side. You can see it's been pinched and rolled over. So that's probably the combination of the bushing being worn and allowing this um, O-ring, there it is right there, it's half twisted. That probably allowed it to roll out of its joint. So tapped it in. When, so um, um, this one went in pretty smooth and that doesn't surprise me because I, I ran a hone down to clean that up a little bit and I'm okay with that because I want it to be fairly snug on this side. Um, and I got, like I said, the O-ring fits in nice. Got the O-ring in this one. And uh, this one was a lot harder. I had to push it in with press. And I used, again, the old bushing to drive it down in place. I got the new O-ring in place. So it's good to go. And the same thing, I've got the split in the bushing in the uh, 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock position. So midway up. So the lubrication goes to the bottom. I'm going to pack these up, both of these up with grease doesn't say to do it but the grease is also going to help as a lubricant and it's also going to help as a seal so i'm going to pack everything up there and then i'm going to be putting these back on we're rolling the, the axle in place and assembling back in place but so far it looks good like i said this one took a little bit more effort i just couldn't tap it but uh, still fairly light pressure with a i think it's a 20 12 ton press Fairly light pressure, push it back in. So it looks like it's all ready to go back together. So I'll bring you back. I'm going to roll the, the front axle back underneath the tractor, get it into position. I'm going to assemble the housing for the front drive shaft and put it back together. I won't show you the details. It's just really putting, there's no bolts involved. You're just uh, pushing pieces back together. And um, get. I'll bring you back when I got that all assembled and let you know how that goes. Did I just not do it? You got your finger tip in there. Okay, so I I went to put in the drive shaft and I couldn't feel the drive shaft engaging with the output shaft. So I pulled off the inspection cover and found this drive uh, universal joint had fallen down. And I found, of course, a great big mouse nest. So that's great. I'll uh, clean all this out and uh, fit this in, but, uh, you know, uh, lesson learned that 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 inspection plate, less most nest, it's got to be out of there so you can fit the universal joint and and the drive shaft together. And once that's all done, then you can put the inspection plate on. So I'm hoping this shows up all right. Um, so right there is the output shaft so that's the clean all the mouse poop out first of all and i sprayed some uh, lubricant in there and i'm going to make sure i keep spraying a whole lot more in anyways um so that's the output shaft you're trying to connect on to so the universal joint like you said that was the problem it was flopping about so now i can slip that in there engage it on the splines i can attempt to there and then now I can insert the drive shaft assembly. So you probably you won't be able to see this, but you'll see at least the uh, shaft going through. So the 
backwards. So here's the, the drive shaft loop, I guess you might call it, fitting over there. Now, so that's the tube and the little metal shafts with this, it's almost like a radiator hose. Now I'm going to insert through all that the, uh, the drive shaft. So you can't see this from behind, but you can see the problem that I was having. When I put the drive shaft assembly, there it is poking, its, poking itself out right there. See, man, this was dropping, so I wasn't hitting. So I'm going to put that right in here. A little, little wiggling back and forth, and there, there it is. It's engaged. So I'm all ready now. But like I said, can't do that without taking this cover off, so they built that for a reason. And now everything is all seated in there. Not a terribly tight universal. The slops on the splines more than anything. Oh well, is what it is. The universal itself is fine. There's no grease fitting provisions for it. But uh, that was the problem. It looks okay. So I'm going to leave that open for a bit and then I'll put the cover on afterwards. And now I'm ready to put the axle in place. Okay, I'm probably not going to show the next step. I've got the axle now positioned underneath the tractor, set up in uh, jack stands. Um, we've got the the real bearing support ready here to go on, drive shafts in. So this will get placed on the drive shaft. And then, like I took it off, I'll slowly walk back, lower the tractor, and direct the... Uh, the uh, the input shaft and the drive shaft uh, together. I'm going to also fill this right with grease in both the front and rear caps. Um, hopefully, I'll help with a little bit of oil leaking. But I noticed the bigger tractors, that's, they have a grease fitting. So, I don't think I'll bother showing that because it's just a series of movements back and forth to get it all into position. It's probably going to be a little boring to watch. So, I'll probably just bring you back when it's in position. Okay, so I got everything all into place. Um, what I did is I disconnected the U-joint. Uh, I showed that to you earlier. Let's see. Disconnected the U, um, universal joint back here. And what I did, hopefully that shows up okay. And then I slid this shaft back. You know, there's just this, um, you know, so you can slide this forward so you can see. No, oh, maybe you can't. But anyway, it's just the uh, hose. There's the gap between these two points. So um, I, I slid this all the way back. There you go. And the drive shaft disconnected. And then I lowered the tractor down just above, there's dowels here. So just so it's just um, beginning to touch the dowels had the uh, a jack stand on the front pinion here and um, and just and the one also in the front and just brought the tractor down position very slowly and then um, when I got things close I just slid the, the drive shaft forward onto the splines slid this forward there's an o-ring in there by the way I put grease and everything so now everything is all, get pull that back. Everything's all attached. So the next thing I did, oh, I'll lose my clamp here. So once that's all in place, brought it down. Now, the next thing is just brought the nuts in these corners here. There's four and there's dowel pins in each place. I got it all lined up brought the, uh, just a thread or two, finger tight, just a thread or two in, and I just wiggled back and forth, and again, used the bolts now to slowly draw the whole assembly. So by the way, when I pushed that forward, um, I was able to get the uh, drive shaft uh, hooked up in the front there as well. 
So that helped a, a fair bit, allowing me to move things forward, then backwards, and then in a line. And then I then used, uh, like I said, these four bolts, and slowly, uh, with the alternating bolts here in the front, slowly drew the, the axle up on the bottom. And the reason for that is you don't want to pull up cockeyed because it's on dowels. You could break something, so you got to be very gentle. By the way, I've also put, like I said, grease over here, put grease inside the cup, just like I said in the beginning, and uh, just slowly lifted everything in place. So it went pretty well, just took a time. Like I said, I didn't film the whole thing because it was really you know, a slow process. I was just went back and forth probably 20 times to, to slowly make adjustments to the position of the axle and, um, and adjustments of the, uh, um, of the jack stands. Uh, I got two or three different hydraulic uh, um, uh, jacks and I'm just using them to, to move, maneuver the axle, uh, the tractor down over top the axle. I had a, uh, another jack at the front um, axle to support it, so I can basically uh, get the, the axle sort of up square as well, or hold it square relative to the tractor as I bring it down. So it went pretty good, it just took a long time. So that's where we are. So all that's left now is I've got to slowly, you can see I've got a gap here, I'm going to slowly draw these four bolts back up, uh, two on this side, two on the front, get that all secure, and then I'm going to put the inspection cover back on, tighten up these hose clamps, and then reconnect the steering up top and it's done. And so that's basically it. So it all went back together, really no problems at all. Um, just tightened up all the... Uh, the uh, torqued up the four bolts that hold the front and the rear bearing of the front axle in place. I've topped up with oil. A lot of discussion on that as well about what type of oil. The manufacturer says the um, HydroGuard 134, which is the hydrostatic transmission oil, which is very thin. A lot of other people in forums say like um, a GL5, a, a gear oil, 80, 90 weight. Um, I'm not going to wait into that conversation. I'm going to keep that a secret what I put in there. Um, all I'll say is it's an old tractor. Anyhow, um, but, but from when I looked at the inside, uh, there didn't seem to be, and when I drained the, the fluids out, it didn't seem to have any appreciable wear. Um, but I'm not done here yet. That's all back together. This was, in terms of disassembly and assembly, it wasn't a hard job. In terms of uh, some of the th work you had to do, replacing the bushings, that was hard. Um, I needed a press. Um, I had uh, die grinders and a range of different tools I was using to try to get the old bearings out. Um, welder to try to build up that uh, the gold surfaces. Don't know how that's going to work. I'll keep you informed about that. So from a, from a the type of work, um, this is probably up there. This is probably a four out of five. If, you know, physical disassembly of it's easy, but uh, this, you know, the type of things you need to do to get the uh, the bushing specifically out, a little bit tricky. Um, safety, you know, make sure you got lots of uh, jack stands, chalk the wheels. You know, in this case, I got a buck in the front. It, it, it uh, moved back a little bit when I put some pressure in the bucket. So, you know, be very careful. A lot of weight there. It's not, not a car, but it's still a 1,600-pound uh, vehicle anyways. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. I'm not done yet, so keep an eye out. I hope to get a video. Uh, the next thing I've got is the front seals. So in the next video, I'll be working on the front axle seals. Right in there um, is where the other leak was, so that'll be a separate video. So again, everyone, thanks for watching.